Good morning. Today we will discuss about numerical power current protection of transformers. In the last lecture, we have discussed about analog filters, the major drawbacks of analog filters, and we have seen that digital filters offer us many advantages when compared to the digital analog filters. And we have also seen how low pass and high pass digital filters are implemented and we have also seen the major differences between finite impulse response filters and infinite impulse response filters. In today's class we will discuss about numerical relays which can be implemented for transformer for protection against overcurrents. So I hope that by the end of this lecture we will be able to describe the numerical overcurrent protection of transformers. So I will start with an introduction to overcurrent protection and then I will go on with this key considerations which can be implemented and then we will move on to the implementation of numerical overcurrent relay and finally we will see the flowchart for implementation of numerical overcurrent relay algorithm and then I will give you a glimpse about the Siemens manufactured overcurrent relay. So let me start with the introduction of overcurrent relays. As you all know that transformers there will be so many types of faults which will be happening in the transformer. There can be incipient faults, internal faults or external faults. Whatever may be the faults, most of them might be of short circuit faults. In most of these cases, in short circuit faults, you will be experiencing a sudden increase in current. Any sudden increase in current may damage the conductors and also the insulation of your transformer. In that case, you are supposed to protect your transformers. In olden days, we used to have this electromechanical release, then we had the static release. So nowadays, everybody is employing microprocessor based release which we call them as numerical relays. So, numerical overcurrent protection for transformers, the numerical overcurrent protection for the transformers, this is our topic today. It is an important aspect for protection of power system components, particularly the transformers, to ensure that they operate safely. Because transformers are the most critical components in power systems, they transfer electrical energy from one circuit to another circuit without any electrical connections. So if anything happens to the transformer, then there will be a big blow to the customers and also to the generating stations. So that's why we need to protect them against power cuts. So when we talk about the numerical power current protection, it generally employs numerical relay devices, which are exclusively de designed for transformer protection. As the name itself indicates, as we have seen in our last classes, when we talk about numerical overcurrent protection, this protects against overcurrent and this indicates that it is made up of some sort of microprocess basic technology. So I have mentioned it, the relays they utilize microprocessor basic technology to measure and also to analyze the current levels. So you will be having the current, it will be measured and it will be analyzed against a preset value. So based upon that, you will give an indication. And these relays, they can be programmed with various settings such that you can use them effectively against overcurrents. So whenever we talk about this overcurrent protection of transformers, whether it is numerical thing or a digital thing or whatever you call this. There are some key things which you are supposed to keep it in mind before you start this concept of numerical design of numerical overcurrent. So what are the key things which you are supposed to concentrate? The first thing is pick up current set. The next time degree set. The next is the characteristics of the curve which you want to implement. And finally, whether you want to include this ground protection also. And since you are working with numerical, so you must be careful whether you are communicating well or not. 
and coordinating with other protection devices. So these things are to be considered in detail. So let's discuss about each one of them before we start implementing the algorithm for overcurrent protection in numerical levels. So I'll start with the pickup current setting. What actually is a pickup current setting? Every relay, overcurrent relay basically, it measures your current with some preset value. If it is greater than or equal to, sometimes equal to, then your preset value, then automatically it will give a signal. So this preset value is called as pickup current. We call it as a threshold value. If your current is greater than your threshold value, then it will automatically give a signal. So what must be this value of threshold? What must be this pickup value which you must keep? So sometimes the choice is always it's with the user. The user can adjust the pickup value of the numerical level or whatever may be the type of value. The user has the flexibility to adjust this pickup value. The selection of pickup value depends upon so many factors. It depends upon your rated current. It depends upon the load conditions. And it also depends upon, let us suppose if you are experiencing sudden in rush currents, when you are turning it on. For fraction of milliseconds, you will be getting some sort of inverse currents, and they are not to be considered as fault. So, in that case, you can adjust the pickup current so as to include the inverse currents. So, it is a user choice to select an ideal value for your pickup currents. So, the pickup current setting is the first thing which a user must concentrate while implementing the numerical overcurrent protection. The second one being the time delay setting. The time delay setting is now as already I said to whenever your current is greater than your pickup value, then automatically your relay will operate, right? Now the question arises. The detection is done, and the next step is to initiate a trip signal. So what must be the time delay between these two? Detecting and initiating the signal. That time delay can be adjusted. Sometimes if it is acting as a backup relay, so some other relay will be operating. So you need to wait for some time. If the primary relay is not activated, then you should activate your second relay. In that case, you need to maintain some sort of time delay. Otherwise, you can operate it instantaneously. If you are the primary relay, you are supposed to operate it instantaneously. So the selection of time delay, it is vested with the user. So sometimes, if the current is existing only for a few microseconds, then it is cannot be a fault, right? Because if it is existing only for a few microseconds, and after a few microseconds, let us suppose if it is the fault is going off and your relay is working properly, and if your system is also working properly, then you need not bother about that. So you are supposed to check for some time. So time delay is required. So you will be observing the system whether this condition is holding good for a few microseconds or a few milliseconds. And if it is still continuing persisting, then you need to operate the initiate the trip signal. So in that case, particularly during the transformer energization, particularly during the turning on, there might be huge inverse currents for only for a few microseconds. Or maybe because of faults sometimes, lightning transient, etc. Sometimes you may be experiencing only for a few microseconds, and this may not be required to be considered as overcurrent conditions. So in that case, you will just wait and watch. So for that you do require some time delay setting because you don't want your transformer to act instantaneously. So time delay setting should be carefully set to allow for normal transient conditions. And you should ensure that adequate protection is provided for your sustained over conditions. If the fault is sustained, then you should take proper action. If it is only for just few seconds or few milliseconds or few microseconds, then you need not to operate. So the time delay setting is one thing which you need to concentrate. The next thing is the current characteristics. As already I told you, in your, I think you might have come across in your previous course. There are different characteristics of over current relays. You might have come across them definite time, inverse time, extremely inverse. So these very extreme inverse. So based upon the operating time based on the current magnitude. There can be definite minimum time. There can be inverse relays. If the current magnitude is high, the operating time will be low. 
and it might be. So it depends upon your characteristics. Sometimes your time remains constant, irrespective of the microwave current, which you call it as a definite time. Sometimes it is ID limit. So it depends upon the application which you are employing. So the characteristic of the curve which you are choosing, this IT characteristics, we call it as time versus current characteristics. They typically have different curve characteristics, inverse time, definite time, extreme linear, very extreme linear, which is a relation between your operating time, or we call it as a time delay, versus fault current. So the selection of the curve characteristics, it must be on the type of transformer, the loading conditions, and the desired protection scheme. And next is ground fault protection. As already said in the initial slides itself, whenever you are trying to implement an over current relay, you need to bother about whether you need to respond to faults related to ground or not. So ground fault protection is critical for transformers, particularly pertaining to the ground, because sometimes we will be having three phases, right? Phase to ground faults are also possible. So you need to consider those things also. So particularly numerical over current relays for transformers. They have separate settings for ground protection, such as pickup current, time delays, and three disciplines to effectively detect the ground faults. So you need to think about whether to consider these ground faults or not. The next thing is communication and monitoring. As already said, these numerical relays are supposed to transmit the data. So they must have these communication capabilities. There are so many communication channels which are available now. You can use the Ethernet, you can use the Modbus, IEC 61850. So different types of things are available in the market. And your relays must be able to communicate the data. Okay. And also, the real-time monitoring of transformer protection status, fault analysis, and remote configuration of relay settings, everything must be enabled. So user is supposed to check all these things. And finally, it's not only the overcurrent relay which is existing in the power system. There might be so many other protection devices which might be acting as a primary relay and backup protection and other things also. And your overcurrent relay, whatever you are designing, it must coordinate with all the other devices. That is most important. Coordination among the protective equipment is more important. Okay. So there might be fuses, there might be circuit breakers, there might be relays, upstream relays, downstream relays, direction relays, overall relays, frequency relays. So your Whatever the protection scheme which you are designing, it must be in coordination with all of the other devices. Okay. So, before you implement anything, coordination studies should be performed to determine appropriate relay settings such that they prevent unnecessary tripping and ensure selective and coordinated operation of protection devices within the forms. So, I started with what are the things which you are supposed to remember? Pick up current setting, time delay setting, and next we move on to relay characteristic, what type of characteristic which you want to choose, and next whether to include ground faults or not. And next we have seen whether communication, whether they must be able to communicate or not, and finally whether they are able to coordinate with other protective devices or not. So these are things which you must consider when you are going with designing of numerical over a current relay. In the next lecture, we will discuss about how to implement a numerical over a current relay.